Day 3 on the West Coast Trail. The hike began early this morning. Today is the longest hike of our journey with 18 and a half kilometers. Can't make it any shorter. This is the distance between the two closest camps of Tsasiatin Cribs and we will cross First Nations land where camping is not permitted. Also, we must make it past Tsasiat Point before the tide makes the passage impossible. We'll know in a few moments if our tide calculations were good. Getting close, getting close. Ouais, c'était pas mal juste, ça. <rire> ouais. Je pense qu'après ça, il faut passer sur la roche. Ouais. Il n'y aura pas vraiment d'autre choix, là. I had heard of the West Coast Trail for the first time in the early 1990s when a friend was preparing to go solo. It froze in my memory like something I would do one day. Between my imagination and the information from Parks Canada, I had a feeling that the West Coast Trail would be a hike entirely in the forest. Oh, you went to Winterfell. Where we wouldn't see anyone for a week. Where we would encamp in a hole in the forest. Where it rains all the time. Where there are no mosquitoes. Where we cross furious rivers in cable cars. where there is no infrastructure, where it is not permitted to swim in the rivers, where it is not permitted to make fires on the beach above the high tide line, where we must climb ladders that do not seem to have an end. Oh well, for the ladders, I was perhaps not so far from reality. The West Coast Trail is located on the west coast of Vancouver Island in British Columbia. To get there, we took the plane from Ottawa to Vancouver and another plane to make the short hop over to Nanaimo. The next day, we wait for the shuttle at the foot passenger ferry terminal. The shuttle will take us to Lake Cowichan for transfer to a second shuttle bus going to Bamfield. At Lake Cowichan, we wait at the Shop and Save convenience store for the arrival of the shuttle to Bamfield. With the arrival of the second shuttle, hikers returning to Nanaimo embark in the first shuttle while we board the second. From Lake Cowichan, the second shuttle brings us to Bamfield, where the northern entrance of the West Coast Trail is located. From Bamfield, the trail goes to Port Renfrew, 75 kilometers away. 
It is possible to begin at the north end to get to the south end, or from the south end to the north end. The only exits are at the trail ends. In recent years, it has become possible to enter the trail at Nitnat and finish at either end. From Lake Cowichan to Banfield, the road is made of crushed stone and very bumpy. The road condition does not slow down the ardor of our driver. In the middle of nowhere, the bus stops near a minivan. A few hikers leave the bus to embark in the minivan that will bring them to Nitnat as a starting point. Here we go again! Before we can start hiking, we must attend a presentation where the ranger communicates mostly safety information on high tides, evacuations, and bears. With the meeting over, we get our permit and the trail map on which the tide table for the next days is taped. Wild animals are seen daily. The recommendation is to keep a safe distance. At 3 p.m., at the end of the presentation, most of the 25 hikers start immediately, heading to the first camp 12 kilometers away. For us, this is a little late to undertake this distance. With three other hikers, we had previously arranged to spend the night in Banfield and start hiking the next morning. Banfield is a very pretty village, a perfect place to spend our last night before the long walk. We had planned to do the trail in 8 days, so we must carry everything we need, rain or shine. Moi je vois 60 livres. Non, moi je... 60 livres, tu as 60 livres, oh fantastique. Ouais. Ok, voilà, ok, on yeah. change. Ok. Je suis à 50 livres, je suis à 20 kilos. Despite our careful planning, our backpacks are 7 kilos heavier than expected. All this gear must fit in our two backpacks. Perhaps a sign of good luck, it is under a bright sun that we start our hike. With our first oui. steps on the beach, we are speechless at the beauty of the scenery. Wow! Attends un petit peu là. Moi là, faut que je le sens. Our first destination is 12 kilometers away, the Michigan Creek Camp. Luckily, we are at low tide. This allows us to walk on the shore and avoid the second highest ladder of the entire trail.
we must keep an eye for buoys attached to branches that indicate access to the forest trail. The first impression I get as I start walking on the trail is that I am in a botanical garden. We come across hikers who started from the south six or seven days ago Hello. and are now about to finish their hike. Oh yeah, we're almost there. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> Everyone is aware of the huge trees of the west coast, but we can't help but be impressed when we're in front of them. Apparently, someone forgot his motorcycle here. Work is ongoing to keep the trail open. Sometimes, maintenance crews just carve a path through the down trees. It is impossible not to be impressed by the trees surrounding us. The reputation of the West Coast Trail comes from its many ladders. We go down our first ladder with pleasure. Okay, so not slippery. No, papa. Okay, not slimy. No, papa, not splintery. Okay. It's easy to miss the sea lion haul-out rock. We must take a side trail to get there, but well worth the trip. Another interesting detour, the Pacina Point Lighthouse. After a 12 kilometer hike, we finally get to Michigan Creek. Hello. 
à l'eau. C'est euh, les choses qu'on trouve sur le bord de l'eau que les, les, les occupants précédents ont pu bricoler pour nous. Il euh, faut juste avoir le courage d'embarquer. Alors, qu'est-ce que tu penses de ta première journée? J'étais contente d'arriver à la plage. Le sol était relativement facile aujourd'hui, sauf dans le dernier kilomètre où là, on a goûté à de la boue, puis de la roche, puis de la racine glissante. Mais euh, dans, le, ça, dans le dernier kilomètre de la journée, là, on, a, on, on y a véritablement goûté. Là. Yes, even if this first leg is considered easy, it's still 12 kilometers with 27 kilos on our back. In the last kilometer, I started having back pain. Fortunately, after moving my backpack up on my hips, the problem went away and never came back for the rest of the hike. That evening, a group of hikers celebrate their last night on the West Coast Trail. Tomorrow, they finish in Banfield. In the group, some Australians. The next morning, the sun rises and the light is spectacular. Par opposition au mien qui a des grosses particules. We prepare breakfast, oatmeal and coffee. Since we had planned to hike for eight days, we had to carry eight days worth of food. Eight days of food is heavy. We chose dense and dry foods. The weight is critical. Every snack, every meal is weighed. Other hikers choose to simplify things. They buy freeze-dried food in outdoor sports stores that just need boiling water added. It's expensive and not very tasty. We break down camp and take a few moments to admire one last time the beauty of the scenery. Today, we aim for Tsosiat Falls, 13 kilometers away. We meet our first wild animal, a mink. Cougar tracks in the sand. Sandpipers, we'll see a lot of them. The West Coast Trail was initially established to allow shipwrecked sailors on the coast to find civilization. As soon as we see a piece of metal on the beach, we think it's a wreck. Et de quel bateau s'agit-il? Oh, 
pas l'air d'être bien ben gros. Oh, il est un petit peu plus haut, celle-là. <rire> OK. Elle était pas au code, celle-là, je pense. Ah, ben oui. Tu penses qu'elle était au code? Ben oui. Bridges are also present to allow hikers to cross ravines. Ça, c'est un à la fois. Deux à la fois, deux à la fois. OK, d'accord. Ça bouge! For safety reasons, only one person can climb a section of ladder at a time. Platforms allow different people to climb different sections of ladders at the same time. Quelqu'un qui vient de monter une coupe d'étage. Ouh! Unusual things can be found along the trail, like Adirondack chairs, as well as the remains of a vintage grader once pulled by horses, and a steam-powered winch. Oh, hey. oh là notre derelict donkey engine. What goes up must come down. At low tide, rock plateaus become exposed and are easier to walk on than soft sandy beaches. You can spend hours without seeing anyone, and then suddenly we meet a group of hikers. 
Uh -huh. Hello. Fuck. We haven't seen any, any, anybody all day, and now it's like there's like a crowd. <laughs> oh, okay, all right. There we go. All right. All right. Don't contradict the guy with the bear spray. Yeah. <laughs> Apart from the ladders, the other thing that makes the reputation of the West Coast Trail is having to cross rivers in cable cars. And this is our first one. This is not a time-lapse sequence. This is running at our normal speed. The trick is that one person holds the car while the other person boards with his bag and hiking poles. Gravity does the work for three quarters of the way. By chance, another hiker on the other side helps pull the car to the destination. Almost there. And we send the car back to the other side so Rene can cross too. Once on the other side, I hold the cable to keep okay. the car in place while Rene boards it. Bloqué! Okay, yeah, bump seat. That's the. And bon idea to put your batons on your sack. All right. Been there, done that. If we can avoid all other cable cars to the end of the trail, we'll do it. A lot of upper body work. Review of our second day. Even more difficult than the first. I have some serious concerns over tomorrow's leg. Fetching water. Fill the bag with fresh water from a stream. and filter by gravity to get drinking water. At 7 p.m. we still see hikers coming from the south. They look completely exhausted. Tomorrow it will be our turn to do this 18 and a half kilometer leg. Today's destination is Cripps Creek. We got up very early, knowing that today will be a grueling long hard day.
The hike today is a mix of beach walking and walk on higher trails. We see here impassable headlands regardless of the height of the tide. While hiking on the beach, we miss a trail entrance. We backtrack a few hundred meters to take the trail. Despite the drought, we must sometimes cross some pretty amazing mud fields. We suspect there are underground streams that keep these always wet. At Nitnat Narrows, a ferry brings hikers to the other shore. Hello! Okay, permit? Good to go. Good to go. Alright. Uh, wow, the first seat we have in three days. <laughs> qu'on vend de la nourriture. This is one of only two places along the trail where you can buy a meal. On the menu, crab and salmon with oven-baked potatoes. Several signs indicate that here they work and live by island time. This is slow food. The cook prepares food as hikers order. We'll be here for two hours, of which one hour and 45 minutes will be spent waiting for our meal. In the shade, the thermometer reads 26 degrees Celsius. With Humidex, it must be in the 30s. As we leave Nitnat Narrows, we have the pleasant surprise of walking on boardwalks in good condition. Short of having ladders, we must sometimes work our way down using routes as stairway steps. Kesma. Hours and kilometers pass, and our legs are more and more tired but the scenery remains as spectacular as ever. Late afternoon, we really start to wonder if we'll have enough energy to get to the end. The first two days can be done without much preparation. It's really from the third day that training makes a difference. We spent the winter training by snowshoeing with loaded backpacks. In the spring, we headed to the Adirondacks to train in conditions that would be like the West Coast Trail. After hiking for three days, we realized that, in the end, every day on the West Coast Trail is different from the previous days. 
as if we were doing a new trail each day. At one point, we see headlands in the distance that seem impassable. We decide to go back up and follow the trail at the top of the cliff. Heat, exhaustion, and altitude gain take every last bit of energy. Our legs are soft, every step is difficult, the arrival time is less and less obvious. From above, we see other hikers who continued straight and are now dealing with rocks. We think the trail we have taken is easier than hiking on the rocky shore. At 7.15 p.m., we finally see the Cribs Creek camp. To our surprise, those who chose to walk on the shore arrived before us. We see quite a bit of plastic and rubber waste on the beaches. You can also find unusual items, such as this old tape recorder. We meet a family that we'll name the family from Langley, in reference to the city of Langley near Vancouver. In their gear, a cowboy-style coffee pot and an axe that must weigh two kilos. We share the campfire and get to know each other. We thought we'd see beautiful sunsets, but this is the only one we've seen. On other nights, the sun sets behind the trees. Despite the drought, the humidity is high and in the morning, everything is covered in dew. After a night punctuated by the bark of sea lions, hikers walking north are leaving early since they know what's ahead of them and those walking south seem to be all ready to go at roughly the same time. Our destination today, Walbrand Creek, with a stop at Chez Monique, a restaurant with an international reputation. C'est des uh, mouettes. After the long and difficult day yesterday, it is with pleasure that we'll be doing today's leg exclusively on the beaches. Today will be special. Other hikers will be visible throughout the day. The flower pot rocks are truly spectacular. Even though the West Coast Trail is for seasoned hikers, it's still amazing to see the range of age, skill and experience of the hikers. A pause at Carmona Lighthouse. It is Monique Knighton, of Quebec origin, who had the idea one day to set up a snack bar by the trail. Future hikers will unfortunately not be able to meet her since she passed away at the end of 2017. Because if he's going to lay down here in the hot sand, he's looking for company. The family from Langley arrives a few minutes after us. 20 plus dollar burgers are a real delight, and the snack bar accepts credit cards. The visible fog here isn't really fog. It is smoke from the wildfires across British Columbia right now. At Carmona Creek, René decides to demonstrate the use of the cable car.
camping for the night at Walbrand Creek Camp. Tonight, we come to camp without feeling completely exhausted. It's as if at Cripps Creek, we turn the page and the rest of the journey is no longer a source of apprehension, but a source of pleasure. We decide to camp upstream, a bit off from the other hikers. Despite the lack of rain, our clothes are wet from perspiration and humidity. We try to take advantage of sunlight to do a little laundry and dry our clothes. Then, we set up the tent and sleeping bags. Our MSR Whisper Light stove, bought more than 20 years ago, is a bit antique. Heavy and complicated to light up, we start by pumping to put pressure in the fuel bottle. Then you have to preheat the burner to allow the fuel to gasify. After a few minutes, a nice blue flame appears. Today, stoves that use a pressurized gas tank light up instantly and weigh a quarter of the weight of ours. This is our stove's last trip. Tonight, at Walbrand Creek, we deal with the most fearsome animal of the West Coast Trail. The bear? No. The cougar? No. The wolf? No. The mouse? These little critters have understood that everything made of plastic may contain food. They even had a taste of my cappuccino crunch. To keep the mice from gnawing holes in our backpacks, we leave them wide open. Another beautiful sunny morning. Getting to the toilet is often an obstacle course. We must work our way around logs or walk on logs. Someone tried to light up a campfire here. Must have been blind. Getting to the toilet can be quite long, especially if you have the good idea to set up your camp away from everybody else. While waiting for my turn, here are the bear-proof food lockers. The trick is to put your food in the locker on arrival, because if you wait a little later, the lockers will be full and you will have to suspend your food from a high tree branch. Here are the composting toilets. They are outhouses where you must drop wood chips in the toilet after each use. In practice, the supply of wood chips was almost always empty. During the information session, 
The ranger told us that from Walbrand Creek, our speed would drop to one kilometer an hour. For this reason, we had decided to limit our leg today to four kilometers and stop at Collide Cove. It's confirmed. From the beginning of the trail, we meet a lot of ladders, routes, and obstacles. Quelque chose de même, là. Ils sont glissantes. Tu veux juste te rouler sur la bouche? Ouais. Okay. I'm going down the ladder. What Renee's technique, where she puts her hiking poles over her right wrist while coming down the ladder to prevent her poles from getting tangled up everywhere. Are you done? No. Okay, you're out. Suspended rope bridge, Indiana Jones style, above Logan Creek. Very memorable to cross. Trust me, you'll love it. <laughs> Probably the least vertical ladder we climbed during the entire trip. Seeing all the tangled vegetation, it seems that this section of the forest was never exploited. We reach a plateau that seems a little clearer. Ça te dérange pas? Euh, Je vais t'attendre de l'autre côté. Ha <laughs> ha. 
<laughs> Arrival at Kalite Cove. Probably the smallest, but also the friendliest of the camps. Pebble Beach, a little less comfortable on the feet. It is here, at Collide Cove, that I start feeling that we're closer to the end than the beginning. I already said that on the West Coast Trail, there are no two days alike. Well, today is the exception. The trail from Collette Cove to Camper Bay is almost identical in terms of geography to the trail from Walbrand Creek to Collette Cove. First morning without sunshine. A last glance before leaving. As we only have 4 kilometers to hike today, we take our time and we're the last ones leaving the camp. Other people have told us the worst things about the infrastructure on the trail. Yet, if we exclude the boardwalks, all facilities were in perfect condition, with the exception of this ladder where a rung was missing. At times, looking at the vegetation, I can't help but draw a parallel with the forest of Costa Rica. C'est un petit peu haut. Ça, ça... Ah ouais, pas de problème là. Ça... Et puis ça bouge! Ok, arrête de marcher, s'il vous plaît. Ok, hello! Yeah. Uh, we, we meet mostly people from Ontario. And uh, we meet a few people from abroad. It's really a day of walk on the tree trunks today. Nice recently built bench to stop and have lunch.
After a long descent, we arrive at Camper Bay, where our friends from Langley have already set up their camp. The man with the axe. Ooh, nice. We we'll probably have company, but... We had heard a lot of good things about Camper Bay, yet the place looks quite ordinary. I must say that the presence or absence of sun makes a big difference in our perception of a place. One of the places not to be missed on the West Coast Trail is Owen Point with its caves. Problem is, they are only accessible at low tide. We do our tide calculations. To be at Owen Point at low tide, we would have to leave Camper Bay at 6 a.m. So be it, we won't see the famous caves. Yet, on the way, we meet a group of hikers coming from the shore, and they tell us there are only 45 minutes of walking on the shore to go to Owen Point. They tell us we have time to get there before high tide. We start with a brisk walk on the rocky shore, being careful not to slip on the algae. In the information session, the ranger warned us about the search channels. We prefer to walk around them, right. then jump over them for safety. Okay. Finally, we reach Owen Point. The tide is rising and Rene ends up in the water. But we're happy we made it. The place is spectacular. From Owen Point, we don't really have the option of going back in the forest to take the trail. We must hike on the shore. According to the information from the ranger, the hike is very difficult because of rocks the size of a small car. Initially, we find that description a little exaggerated. We move on with a smile. After the first kilometer, we begin to understand. It takes us four hours to hike the two and a half kilometers separating Owen Point and Trasher Cove Camp. Trasher Cove, our last camp. We see Port Renfrew across the bay. For others, it's their first camp. Trasher Cove is cluttered with logs, and the toilets are the smelliest of all the West Coast Trail. A mink running on the shore is good entertainment in the evening. Then, an employee of Parks Canada stops to ask hikers if they saw wild animals. He then enters the forest to change memory cards and batteries of cameras installed there.
For our last morning, we get fog. Far from ruining the moment, it gives the place a magical look. The last five kilometers take us to Gordon River. We must then take a ferry to cross the river and complete our journey. The arrival at or departure from Trasher Cove by the forest is very steep. We get a long climb. Trees in the mist are a mesmerizing beauty. This last leg of the trail is physically demanding because of the numerous climbs and descents. From time to time, we have to stop and rest and eat a little. Well, ça prouve qu'on est sur le bon sentier. Oh, il y a une espèce de, une espèce de. Un chariot de quelconque, là. Wow. We come across equipment and steel cables, a reminder of the time when the forest was exploited. Another indication of the exploitation of the forest, we don't see the tangled vegetation that accompanied us in the last few days. Is it a divine sign announcing the end of the trail? A ray of sunshine appears straight ahead. The only sign we saw in 75 kilometers un petit peu là, on va juste faire un petit vue en plongée là, ouais. de notre dernière échelle. Euh, ben oui, c'est ça, et verticale. Ah non, je donnerais quand même 5 degrés. Là. 5 degrés, ok, bon d'accord. You made it! Well, we made it. We lift the yellow boy to indicate to the ferry that we're ready to cross.
arrival at Parks Canada office at Gordon River. It's only after looking at the photos that I realize that it is a mobile home with a roof and some walls added. My backpack weighs 9 kilos less than at the beginning, the weight of the food I ate. The next morning, back in the West Coast Rail Express, that brings us back to Lake Cowichan, where we'll board the shuttle back to Nanaimo. Although the road to Lake Cowichan is paved all the way, there are bridges where crossing is only done in one direction at a time. Yeah, let's do this, okay? Yes, yes, yes. You're a gentleman. Yes. It doesn't mean I have to do it quickly. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's pulled out his phone! <laughs> he's pulled out his phone, he's taking a picture. <laughs> oh, man. Uh oh, what's she getting? Uh oh, oh she's getting oh, mad. She's coming over. <laughs> You're speeding! Yeah, it does! <laughs> 